demand is about 10x now. It's going to 20x. So the price should react accordingly. You're already yeah. seeing Omega candles in other markets like in yep. Egypt, in Turkey. It was uh, like 10 Omega candles, 11 Omega candles. It went up like a million Egyptian pounds. They saw a $1.4 million candle for the day. Jesus. But in Turkey, you're already seeing like regularly two Omega candles. That's why Omega candles are great. It's like a good measuring stick for what we're going to see in main Bitcoin, the dollar Bitcoin, dollar denominated Bitcoin. Jan 3 Chief Executive Officer and Big Bitcoin Bull Samson Mo believes Bitcoin will hit a massive $1 million per coin in 2024, or at the latest, in 2025. As a result of his work at Jan 3, a Bitcoin-focused firm committed to accelerating hyper-Bitcoinization, Samson frequently speaks with politicians across the globe to facilitate Bitcoin adoption. Samson has recently worked on orange-pilling top government officials in Indonesia, Colombia, Montenegro, and Madeira, an autonomous region of Portugal that recently hosted Michael Saylor, Jack Mallers, and other top industry personalities at the Bitcoin Atlantis conference. Samson's ultra-bullish case for the leading digital asset is predicated on a significant supply shock, which he believes is only weeks away. In addition to the increased demand from ETFs and the coming halving event, Samson predicts increased demand for Bitcoin from nation states. In fact, his biggest warning for retail investors is to adopt Bitcoin before nation states do. During a recent interview with the What Bitcoin Did YouTube channel, Samson explains that BlackRock's passionate and successful venture into Bitcoin has made orange-pilling global leaders much easier. Samson is optimistic that one or two nation states will adopt Bitcoin before this cycle ends. He predicts it will happen after the halving event in April, further exacerbating the supply-demand imbalance. We will now bring you clips from Samson's interview, as well as clips from Galaxy Digital CEO Mike Novogratz's latest interview with CNBC. But before we do, please take a little time to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks, and enjoy the video. The whole setup we have right now is perfect for a run-up. You have demand far outstripping supply and yep. supply about to be cut. You know, having is in a month and change. Yeah. The ETFs alone are pulling in about 22,000. So given that exchanges have about 2.2 uh, million, maybe less, like glass note says 2.2, I think it's less. And the demand is like three, 4,000 a day, just from ETFs alone, that doesn't leave us a lot of time to drain that pool of Bitcoin. Demand is about 10x now. It's going to 20x. So the price should react accordingly. Even if that doesn't happen, you have the concept of uh, the Veblen effect and the Veblen threshold, which What's once the you... the Veblen effect? Though? Veblen is... Uh, the Veblen... Uh, so it's Veblen goods are what were theorized. Like a luxury good is valuable because it is valuable. Okay. But I just twisted it a bit and called it the Veblen effect. But okay. as Bitcoin becomes more valuable, it just becomes more desired because it is valuable. And there's a threshold at which you cross. I think that threshold is probably parity with gold market cap, which is about four fifty to $500,000 a coin. Okay. Once you cross that Veblen threshold, you start to demonetize gold because now this thing is gold. It's... Mm -hmm. uh, multi-trillion dollar, we're already trillion, but like eight to 12 trillion dollar market cap. Then you start to eat into gold because people see it as equivalent to gold. It's the new gold. And I think the, the media narratives will say the same thing. It, that's an important threshold when we pass gold. That's at the point at which gold starts dropping and people start moving the value of they stored in gold into Bitcoin. But I think that threshold, the... Veblen threshold is where you start to see Apple moving. Because right. for them, for a lot of people that are new to Bitcoin, it's hard to understand when you should go in. Yeah. But when you overtake gold, psychologically, you've crossed the barrier that this is the new gold. Yeah. So like we talked about earlier, retail is not here yet because it's not high enough yet. Right? So you're already, you get yeah. it. You get it implicitly. It's yeah. not high enough. But at 0.1M, it's high enough. We've been very critical of BlackRock in the past for the ESG nonsense, for them hoovering up large parts of uh, um, the housing market, mm -hmm. especially 2008. They've not always been, you know, 
a good player in in, in markets. Uh, no, I think you have to assume that they're going to be a bad the actor. Worst, yeah, you should assume everyone's going to be a yeah. bad actor, and this is why you need decentralization of a lot of things, especially mining. You need devs that are not all in one jurisdiction. You need miners that are not all in the U.S. And I think you need countries that are adopting it too. Yeah. This is how you mitigate that risk. So I think the work we're doing at Jan3 to onboard nation states yeah. is critical because, yeah, BlackRock has a lot. U.S. government has a lot. China has a lot. But let's get some into Argentina. Let's get some into, uh, I don't know, Brazil. Let's get some into India. And then it's a competition between BlackRock and nation states, which I think equals out that balance of power. Definitely seeing a lot more interest. We had a number of meetings last year, yep. uh, meeting with the president of Colombia, Suriname, prime minister of Montenegro. And this year, it's just trying to get some of those across the finish line, but also trying to get more. But I think the meetings are going to come easier now that the ETFs are approved. Right. So we got those meetings before ETF, but post-ETF, that whole landscape has changed. It's no longer a discussion like, well, Bitcoin is used by criminals, right? No, it's used by BlackRock. Samson is predicting a 20x Omega candle that would almost immediately take Bitcoin to a million dollars per coin. According to Mo, the Omega candle is the higher version of the God candle, which could see a price gain of up to $100,000 in one price jump. If something even remotely close to that happens in 2024 or 2025, there will be a mad dash for Bitcoin by retail and institutional investors alike. In no time, the leading cryptocurrency will be exchanging hands for hundreds of thousands of dollars per coin. Do you agree with Samson's ultra-bullish price predictions for Bitcoin? Let us know what you think in the comments section below. In other equally bullish news, Galaxy Digital CEO Mike Novogratz recently interviewed with CNBC, during which he gave his opinion on the ongoing Bitcoin rally and why prices are so high. According to Novogratz, this is as much the story of adoption as it is the story of investors quickly realizing that the dollar is getting rapidly devalued and will someday be worth practically nothing. Here are some clips from the interview. There's a, a mindset shift, right, that all of a sudden the U.S. has broadly endorsed Bitcoin, right? You think about what's going on in D.C., uh, this is a vote, right? The American people have just voted and they have voted they like Bitcoin and they like uh, digital assets. And so Washington needs to get off the stick, get off the couch and start doing something. Right? This is going to be a, an issue for Democrats in this election who have been perceived to be standing in the way uh, of Bitcoin in races like Ohio and in Montana, the Senate races, you know, the crypto pack is putting in money. And so I think that's what you're seeing. You're seeing baby boomers get their first shot right through the RIA channel. Like there's 80 billion or 80 trillion dollars of baby boomer wealth. And they're putting a the small amount in. And Bitcoiners don't like to sell. Like they often think of their net worth and how many coins they have, not how many dollars they have. Well, we have a, pol a political situation where both candidates seem to want to spend a whole lot of money. Uh, right. You know, when, when Biden's deficit or Biden's, um, you know, budget came out with a, a you know, trillion plus deficit, uh, and, you know, that doesn't engender a lot of uh, spirit when it comes to wanting fiscal prudence, right? Bitcoin has always been a report card on fiscal stewardship. And we've got no stewardship in D.C. right now. There's two two vectors of Bitcoin. One is adoption, and this move is mostly adoption, and the other is macro. And the macro factors are, right, the Fed, but it's also, and, and it's mostly Congress and the budget, right? We are running deficits that are in crises levels. You know, this has been a, a wild ride of an asset. We're in price discovery mode right now. And if you're looking at the charts, you could see 100,000 like that could be a target, but you don't know when you're in price discovery mode because we had a billion dollars of inflows last night into the into the ETF complex. As long as that is positive, the price is going to keep grinding higher. Once that becomes negative, you'll see that the first real correction. And so I think right now every trader is watching, you know, add up the nine ETFs and see what the, the net is. And as long as there's inflows. Now, of course, there's lots of other inflows and outflows in the Bitcoin universe. But right now, that's got the, the zeitgeist of what, what people are making their trading decisions off of. Uh, things are frothy. Funding rates are high. And so in times like this, you always have to be ready for a correction. I don't think we go back below 50, 55,000. I think that's the no, new floor unless something dramatic happens. The genius of Bitcoin really is that Satoshi white paper, which sets the 
the monetary policy for this ecosystem in, in code. And in a world where, I mean, look at the Nigerian currency, pull it up on your chart. And so if you're in Nigeria, Nigeria like it, it's interesting in almost every, well now in every country on earth, Bitcoin's made an all time high, but in some of the, the charts, it's staggering what, how much wealth it preserved. And until you get countries that run more uh, credible fiscal policy, people are gonna wanna buy that story. And it's a story that's spreading. It's been full on bullishness for Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies for at least another 12 to 18 months. Bitcoin is currently trading at all time highs at over $72,000 per coin. Though it dropped briefly earlier today, the leading cryptocurrency is still up by about 200% in the past year and about 40% in the past month. Other top cryptocurrencies like Ethereum, BNB, Dogecoin, Solana, and Avalanche have also recorded significant gains, which seldom happens at this point in the bull market. What are your thoughts on Samson's Moe's $1 million prediction for Bitcoin? Please drop your comments below, give this video a thumbs up, and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.